reaching out here in your presence you want to go deeper in your light come alive we come alive come on get ahead of praise this morning <laughs> It's great to have you here this morning. No matter what we faked, we can lift our voices to the one who is greater, the one who is bigger. So this morning, this song speaks about no matter what we face, we're going to put our God first. If you're struggling today, he's a God who can see you through the hardest of times. No matter how you feel, he is faithful. I count on one thing. Well, I'll get it here. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late. Working all things out, working all things out. Sing it with me. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. And yes, I will bless your name. And yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God has never fails, will not fail. No matter the sickness, no matter the pain of the relationships, Father, you are bigger 
And Lord, if we just learn how to focus on you and praise you even through those storms, even through those trials in life, God, we'll see the overcoming power because you have overcome. There is nothing too great that you cannot do, God. You are a miracle working, God. Today, God, we lift you high because, Lord, it is in your name that all things are changed. It's in your presence, God, that we are made new. So, Lord, I pray today that you would just move upon our hearts, inspire our lives, encourage those discouraged. God, I pray for those that feel distant to you, God, that they would now feel the presence, your presence, come close to them. Fill this place, this space, God, with your amazing presence. Broken and scattered in mercy gathered, mended and whole, empty handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. 
Father God, this morning, you've already made a way. We just have to trust you. As we come before you, you change us from the inside out, God. If you need something from God today, would you just lift your hands all across this place? You need a miracle. You need a healing. Maybe you need a, a healing in a relationship. Maybe you need a financial miracle today. Whatever it is, just right now, lift your hands. Say, God, I give this to you. I give it to you now. And I believe you're big enough to take care of it. Maybe not in the way that I think, but in a way that's best for me. So God, right now, we pray over those, their hands raised, that God, you would touch them. You would strengthen them, that God, most importantly, you reassure them that you are with them, even through the trial even through the loss. Your God, whose grace is amazing. So Lord, I pray, encourage those lives today. Let them hold on to the one who never fails. That's why we can sing and lift our hands, going through the valleys, going through the trials, because you can do the impossible. You never fail. Lord, I pray that your word would just continue to speak to us today. Thank you for your word of encouragement that's been guiding us through even the season we're going through. Around the world, God, your word brings life. Your word brings stability. Your word brings hope to the hopeless, light to the darkness. So let your word continue to speak in our lives, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Falling on my head And just like the guy His feet are too big for his bed and Nothing seems to fit Those raindrops are falling on my head And they keep falling Raindrops keep falling on my head But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red Try is not for me Cause I'm never gonna stop the rain By complaining Because I'm free Nothing's worrying me Um, today we are continuing this series called Overwhelmed, and I've been talking with you guys about this for weeks now. This is a 12-week series that we've been doing where we've just been going through the book of Philippians, just been looking at the verses, breaking them down, finding out what they say to us at our current situation or maybe a situation that is coming up down the road or maybe a situation you just come through. And in this series, we've been hearing from the Apostle Paul who is writing to the church in Philippi, and the church in Philippi, he's trying to encourage them, even though Paul's life is not in great circumstance. If you guys remember, he is in prison. He actually is on the road to execution by Nero. The, the, the emperor Nero is going to, he's on the docket to, he's basically on death row. Uh, he is on death row waiting for his execution, uh, for preaching the gospel, for standing up for God's truth. And so he is in prison in shackles for two years, uh, chained to a guard uh, every single day, four-hour shifts, in and out, different guards come in. And yet, in this letter that he writes while a guard is next to him, remember, the guard is next to him, he, it, it's a personal letter, it's a practical letter, it's an inspirational letter, even though his life circumstances at the point is not very inspirational. He felt compelled by God to inspire this church in Philippi despite where he's at because he knew who to point the people to. And so throughout 
throughout the book of Philippians over uh, 11 times, it talks about consider it pure joy, uh, count it joy, be joyful, rejoice. He talks all these things about the joy and the rejoicing. And I know in our world today, we are lacking so much joy. Hello? Right? Don't hear a lot of good news anymore. You know, you turn on the news. I know I wake up every morning, I turn on the news, and I go, please, let there be something good in the news. And it seems like things just kind of get a little worse. Don't seem to be any brighter. But Paul is trying to say to the church, he's trying to say to that church, he's saying, listen, no matter what life gives you, no matter what you face in life, no matter how difficult it may seem, rejoice because your heavenly Father is greater. He's bigger. He can overcome all those things. And so we've learned how to handle conflict. We've learned how to find satisfaction in life. We've learned uh, what it means to be a man. We've learned how, what, how it is to succeed in life. Uh, and today, this is, a, this is a sermon that I have, I have preached a couple of times, but it just comes back because this is one of my by far favorite verses in the entire, I say that a lot because I have a lot of favorites, but this really is my favorite for today. This is my favorite one for today. Um, this is one that just speaks so well about how our attitude must be even in the circumstance, in a pandemic, in crisis, in a depression, uh, in a time when financial crisis is upside down, in war times. This is the verse that should drive the Christian faith. And here's what it says. It starts off in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. What? Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. What? Rejoice. Now, it's interesting that Paul would start this off by saying this. And typically what I do is I always go back and I go, okay, what was Paul doing? Paul, Paul not only was preaching to the church, he was preaching to himself. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, Paul. Rejoice. Rejoice. Okay? It says, he goes on to say, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Here's the, here's the, man, I love this part. Do not, say it with me, do not, what's he say? Do not, do not be anxious about anything. Do not stress about anything. Don't worry about anything. Finances, don't worry about them. Well, it's easy for you to say. Well, it's easy for me to say, but Paul said it, not me. It says, do not be anxious, do not be worrisome, do not be stressed about anything, but what? In every situation, what are we to do? By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. It goes on to say, and the what? The, the what? Come on, y'all, now wake up out there. I know, I know it's, it's been a while since you get to preach with me. Come on now. I said, and the which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, what are we supposed to do? Think about such things. Father, help us today to hear from your word and not just hear it, God. Be changed by it. Be made new. Renew our minds, God, in a world full of bad news, in a world full of chaos, in a world full of upheaval and turmoil, and God, in a world that you don't even want to step out of the doors every day, but God, Paul challenges us and encourages us, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. God, teach us. How to rejoice in even these circumstances we're facing in the world today. Teach us that today, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Is it even possible to rejoice in the middle of this craziness we're facing? I mean, how is it that Paul, Paul wasn't, 
we, we don't know exactly what was going on in the world that, back in those days, but we know they probably weren't in the middle of a pandemic. They probably weren't in the middle of a, of a financial crisis. They probably weren't in the middle of job loss. They weren't in the middle of all this. But I will tell you this, and I, I did an article for the paper this past week, and I said, even though we are in, um, we are in unusual times, we're not in unprecedented times. And I've said that to you guys. This is nothing new. There has been crisis. There have been pandemics. There have been financial struggles. There have been breakdown. Nations have fallen. Uh, other generations in the past have faced, honestly, far worse than what we're facing today. Are you all hearing me? The generation, the greatest generation, faced worse than what we faced. World War I to a Great Depression to World War II, that is, and all in, a, all in just a generation. We oftentimes will step back and go, woe is me, look how miserable my life is. I have to. You know, I have to put a mask on to get some groceries. Ooh. You know? We, we get so caught up that we forget that we are to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Even in the middle of a pandemic, we can rejoice. Not because we're in denial. And not because we, we're sticking our head, heads in the sand and being like, well, I... I just ignore it and it'll go away. It, it, that doesn't ever work. That never has worked. It's not about ignoring. It's not about, it's not about being oblivious to it. What it's about, it's about perspective. Y'all hear me? It's about where our eyes are focused. If you put your trust in money, then you're in a world of stress right now because the money is not real secure. If you put your, your hope and your future in your job, and your job is on the bubble being lost, you're going to find anxiety and stress. If you put your hope and your, your, your future in your relationships, your husband, your wife, or your kids, and you're, you are captured by fear of losing them, you have lost perspective. The perspective is, the reason why Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice, is because Paul had a perspective that said, even though I'm in chains, my God is still in control. My God can bring me through this circumstance. Think about what causes stress in your life. What causes stress in your life? What causes anxiety in your life? Don't look at your spouse blame them. What causes stress? Is it your job? Is it your finances? Is it a relationship? Is it um, front spot parking at the grocery store? Is that what causes stress in your life? Uh, what causes stress in your life? Christmas season, you know, Christmas times rolls around, lots of stress comes in. Uh, we just came through a very high stress time in uh, our life with our son getting married. And if you know anything about Tyler and Hannah, they are as, as sweet as they can be, and they really didn't care. They just wanted to get married. So it was like, right, guys? Just want to get married, right? And, and so we would say, what do you want? We don't care. Okay, well, I, that's stress on us. All right, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and it's so funny because they're just kind of going through it. Like, yeah, this is great. Love it. It's great. And we're like, ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it was a good day. <laughs> stress. What causes stress in your life? I want to give you four steps, four ideas for stress relief. Anybody in here ever get stressed? Let me see. Raise of hands. Honesty in the house. Any honesty? Keep them up for a second. Keep them up for a second. Keep them up for a second. I just want to see. If you do not have your hand up, tell us what the secret is because I, I need to know. We all have it, right? And you know, I, 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 teachers, I, I, teachers, can I just tell you how much I love you? Don't we love our teachers? Don't we love our teachers? Come on. And teachers, you are in the middle of, I know, a very stressful season, a very stressful time. And so thank you for your service to our community. Um, you know, during pre-pandemic, parents did not appreciate you as much as they do now. I guarantee you that. 
Uh, just remind them of that whenever they come in and want to gripe about something. Just say, hey, you can keep them at home. You know that, right? <laughs> they don't have to come to school. They can do online learning now. It's done. You know, so I, I just think that, you know, so much stuff that we have that we're facing that I just want to talk about four things, four steps that you could take from what I see in the verses here and then the result of those four steps. The first one is this, uh, worry about nothing. Now, some of you, this is like, it should say worry about everything because that's what you do. You worry about everything. You ever lay in bed at night and worry about things that will never happen and never come to pass? But my golly, it is on your mind and you are worried about it, right? You can't sleep. You go to bed early. You try to get her in bed early, but you wake up early. It just seems like it's overwhelming. Well, verse 6 says, do not be anxious, do not worry, do not stress, do not fret, do not be consumed with anything. Amplified version says, do not fret of having any anxiety. Worry is a killjoy. Stress will suck the life out of you and it'll add a lot of years to your life. Not good in a bad way. I should say it'll deduct a lot of years off your life. Stress is consuming. There's two kinds of worry. There's macro worry, which is what we're in the middle of right now, a pandemic. Macro, big, everyone worries about, everybody thinks about. And there's micro worry. Micro worry, the things that affect you, the small things that no one else may look at that and they go, that is so silly, you're worried about that. But to you, it means something. To you, it's big. Paul says, do not worry about the big and the small. The macro and the micro. Worry is assuming responsibility that is only for God's to have. When we worry, it's okay to be diligent. It's okay to have, uh, have a plan and put a plan in place. It's okay to have a But when worry consumes you, when worry overtakes you, you are assuming responsibility that God never intended for you to have. That is God's place not yours. You're playing God with the circumstance or the situation you're in the middle of. A study came out and it said, here are the things that, here's how worry breaks down. 40% of what you worry about never happens. 40%. Say it with me. How much? 40% of what you worry about never happens. 30% of worries and concern are of the past. You can't change it anyway. It's already happened. That's 70%. 12% of the worries are needless worries about your health, which hinders your health more. Think about that. You worry about your health, and you actually wind up making your health diminish. 10% of worries are about insignificant or petty concerns, but they may be big to you. The study says only 8% of the stuff that you worry about or that we worry about as human beings actually are legitimately to be worried about. 8%. Worry can't change the past. Worry will stifle and control your future. And worry will destroy your present because you can't be in the present. Do not worry about anything. Some people are natural worriers. You know who these guys are. They're kind of born with it. They think about everything. It's kind of like a, 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 a they're very, they could be very negative. I mean, if it's to be worried about, they're going to think about it. They're going to ponder upon it. Well, you know, my, um, my father-in-law, he's a worrier when it comes to fuel in a car. If your car gets to a half a tank, you better find a gas station and fill it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right? True. So in our minivan... We have miles to empty gauge. <laughs> and, it, and it tells you. And so when he was here just, uh, uh, just this past weekend, we had 11 miles to empty on that sucker, baby. We were seeing how far we could push. Because it lies. You know you got more than 11 miles. You got at least 30 miles left in that. I think it's lying to us. You know? My father-in-law, he worked. My father-in-law is one of those probably, he's always been a worrier. Just thinks about stuff and consumed with stuff and worried about stuff. Some people are bent that way. And then you have some people, laissez-faire, you think, they don't worry about nothing. I mean, they wake up, you wish you, they're like, hey, dude, it's all good, man. 
I just cut my arm off. It's all good. It's okay. <laughs> you know, I'll grow it back somehow. It'll be fine. You know, we're good. Jesus said this, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles in its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the future. Let God take care of you. The inside here, if you have your notes, the inside is in order to relieve stress, live one day at a time. Live in the moments, the moments that are given to you because they, they are the things that are most precious. Number one, worry about nothing. Number two, pray about everything. Whenever God tells you to eliminate something in your life, whenever God tells you to get rid of something in your life, he wants to, he will, he always replaces a negative with a positive. So when God says for you to get rid of something, he'll replace it with something positive. And in this situation, verse six goes on to say, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So what I'm saying is, instead of worrying, we need to pray. When you're worried about your job, don't worry about it. Ask God to help you in your job. God, okay, my job is on the, on the bubble. You know what we need as a family. You know where I'm at. Please, I just ask you, God, please take care of my family and take care of this situation I'm facing. When finances are not quite where they need to be, whenever you don't know how you're going to make, there's more month than there is money, and you don't know how you're going to make it, you get on your knees, and instead of worrying about it, you pray. You say, God, I will do anything you want me to do to make some extra money, or God, just help me figure this out. I give it to you right now. I will not worry about it. Paul says, don't panic. Pray. I don't have any time to pray. Pastor Kevin, I'm really busy. I'm really busy worrying. How much of your life would you gain back if instead of worrying, you replace worry with prayer? <laughs> wow, we'd see some amazing things happen. Because quite honestly, we, we actually like, I think, as human beings, we actually enjoy the thought that God needs us to figure out the situation. We like to be part of the equation. It makes us feel valued. So we're like, okay, God, don't know what I'm doing about finances, so I'm just going to go out and get three more jobs and kill myself to make it in me. Now, God may tell you, God may have you get another job in order to fill in the gap that you need financially, but he's not going to have you go get three jobs that takes you away from your family and consumes every part of your life. That's not the way God works. Remember, God takes the negative and replaces it with a positive. So you may, instead of worrying, replace that worry in your life with prayer in everything. We're going to pray. That petition that petition word means a specific request. When you talk to God, get downright to the nitty-gritty, accurate what you're asking for. Whenever I have needed God to do something in my life, I've been specific with him about what I was worried about. If it had to do with Finances, it had to do with a bill. It was literally, it was, okay, God, I have this credit card bill that is consuming my mind, and I need you to help me. It's $100 or it's $50, whatever it was. I need you to help me with it. And God always came through specifically to the prayer that I asked him for. Get real in prayer. Philip says this, when you pray, tell God every detail of your needs. Tell him everything. He's not surprised. And you say, well, why do I have to tell God everything? Isn't he all knowing? Yeah, he is. But he wants his children, just like, just like, for example, your kids. You know when your kids are upset, right? You know when your kids are upset. You can tell. You can read it on their face, their demeanor, everything about them. You can tell they're upset. But you don't know what they're upset about. And you go and ask them, hey, what are you upset about? Nothing. You know something's wrong with them. You know something's going on. And you're like, well, just you know, talk to me, talk to me. And they say, it's about a boy. 
Well, first off, you got to find that boy and take care of him right away. You say, okay, it's about a boy. Well, what else? What's, what about the boy? And you get details. Why? Because as a parent, you want to help them navigate the challenge that they're going through. And, and, it, and psychologically, can I tell you, psychologically, it's better for them to explain it than just to be generalized. So yes, God understands, and yes, God knows, but when you talk to God, he wants you to explain yourself for your own understanding. It helps you work things out. There have been times that I've been praying and talking with God, and it would be like this. It was like, bing. It was like, oh, yeah, there it goes. And I would say something out loud, and I'd go, well, that is just really silly to think that way. <laughs> I'd be praying, and I'd say, well, you know, I think this. And I'd say, and I'd go, well, that's just silly. Why would I even think that way? It helps di- uh, kind of break down those thoughts. First Peter says, um, Unload all your worries on him since he is looking after you. Life insurance did a a study. People who attend church once a week live an average 5.7 years longer. So I want to see you all back here next Sunday if you want to live five five and a half years longer. There you go. There's a benefit for coming. And the reason why they said it is because of prayer and relationships that help people work through the struggles of life. Another version says this, you can throw your whole weight of your anxieties upon him and you are his personal concern to God. The insight here is this, there is no problem that is too big for God's power or too small that God cannot, does not concern about. There's nothing too great that God's power cannot move upon, nor nothing too small that he is not concerned about. James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. You must ask. You must talk to God. You must be detailed, and you need to take the worry and bring it to the Father who loves you and cares for you, no matter how great or small you think it is. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Number three, thank God for all things. Verse 6 goes on to say, with, in everything, with thanksgiving, always giving thanks to him. The healthiest emotion that we have as human beings, the healthiest attitude is the attitude of thanks to God. Whenever you look at what you have and you look what others don't have, the healthiest attitude is to be thankful for what you have. It's to be thankful for the blessings that God has given you. Ungrateful people are some of the most miserable people on the planet. Ungrateful people who needs the who need something more, they're never satisfied. They're always wanting more, 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 more money, better car, bigger house, more clothes, more shoes, more, more, more. Ungrateful people are never satisfied. And let me tell you something. Ungrateful people are some of the most unhappy people on the planet. But grateful people, grateful for the little or the much that they have. What did Paul say last week we learned about? He said, he said I, have learned to, I have learned to be content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether clothed or naked. I've learned to be content. Paul's teaching us here, give thanks because our God already knows where we're at. Here's an assignment for you guys to do. This week sometime, whenever you're in your prayer time, which you should have a lot of it now, because I've taken all the worry away, now it's prayer, I want you to write a list of 10. 10 things, people, whatever it is, you're thankful for, you're grateful for. Make a list of 10. And I want you then to tuck that someplace that whenever you get ungrateful and whenever you become bitter or whenever you become uh, tired or anxious or stressed out, you get that list out and you go, okay, I am grateful for my beautiful kids. I am grateful for my wife. I am grateful for my home. It may not be the biggest, but it keeps me dry, it keeps me warm, and it keeps me chilled in the summer. 
I'm grateful for it. Thank God for his gratefulness. The insight here I have for you is number, number third insight is there is always something that we can be grateful for. If you're not grateful for your life and living in America, even as kind of upside down it might be right now, you're missing out. America and all of its problems, America and all of its challenges, America and its, all of its politics that's going on, God, God is still in control. You know, this pandemic, we just got to pray. Got to replace the worry with prayer. Now, I'm not saying be ignorant. I'm not saying step outside of what, the, uh, what have been recommended to us. What I'm saying is we pray and we trust God. We don't worry about anything. We pray about everything. We thank God in all things. We live in the greatest country still to this day, whether you like it or not, the greatest country that has ever been born on the face of the planet. That's America, yeah. right? Am I, are, you, are you all with me? You better be some Americans in this house yeah. today, right? Listen, I don't care what the world says about this land we live in. Is it flawed? Yeah, you know why? It's led by flawed men and women. It's going to be flawed. But we as Americans and we as Christians have such an opportunity right now during this season to stand up for who God is and where he needs to be in our life. All right, get off of that. Next one, number four. Think about the right things. Number four, we're, gonna worry about, we're not going to worry about anything. We're going to pray about everything. We're going to thank God in all things. Number four, we're going to think about the right things. Turn your neighbor and say the right things. Whatever causes stress in your life, the hundred things that causes stress in your life, they probably aren't the right things to be thinking about. Here's what he said, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, this is what you think about. Be choosy about what you think about. Be choosy about what you watch. Be choosy about what you listen to. Because all these things will cause an adverse chain reaction in the thought process of your mind. Okay? They said it. Growing up, heard it a lot, garbage in, garbage out. What you think about, you will become. So think about this. Think about the movies you watch. Think about the TV shows that flood your home. Think about the music that's on your playlist. Is it pure? Ooh. Is it noble? Is it praiseworthy? Does it bring glory to God? Think about it. Think about the social media that bombards your life. The Instagram and the, and the uh, fake book and the, well, the, the big one I know is TikTok. And everybody's like, I love TikTok. Hey, you know what? Love TikTok. Go right ahead. But just remember, be choosy about what you allow to come in. TikTok, man, it's just a bunch of videos of stupid people doing stupid stuff, stupid time all day long. I mean, you literally just, you feel yourself lose brain cells watching this social media stuff. I've, I've never even, I don't think I've seen a TikTok. I think my kids, I know Lily loves TikTok. I try to tell her China's a part of that. I'm trying to get her off of that China thing. China. We've got 45 days. <laughs> got 45 days to fix it in America. You know, many don't know that, but they got 45 days to fix TikTok. So anyway, be choosy about it. Be choosy about, here's one that we don't really think about. Be choosy about the conversations you have with people. The water cooler talk, the office talk the jokes that are told. Be choosy about it. 
Because if you fill your life with things that cause anxiety and stress, you're going to find yourself always stressed out. Money. Be choosy about what you, you, how you do, what you think about in your money situation, what you invest your money in and where you put, be choosy about it. One version translation, the, the Jerusalem Bible translation says, fill your mind with these amazing things. Fix your mind on the pure things in life. Paul is saying, listen, I'm not telling you can't live in the world, but just as Jesus said, Jesus prayed this. He prayed, he said, I do not pray you take them out of the world, leave them in the world, but make them separate. We live in a world, but Jesus has called us to be different, to look different, to act different, to walk different, to be choosy different. I've gone to movies that language was so bad I've got up and walked out and lost my money. But choosing this was, that was not what I wanted to fill my mind with. We don't have to worry about movies now because there's none being made. Right? Proverbs 23, 7 says this, as a man thinks, as a woman thinks, there their life is, so they will be. As you think, you go. Stress reliever, worry about nothing, pray about everything. Thank God in all things and think about the right things. And what's the result? Verse 7 says this. The result is this, this peace that, that will come upon you whenever you can do this. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If you do this, another version says, If you would do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than human mind can understand. His peace will keep your will keep your thoughts and your heart quiet as the rest of you trust in the Lord. What does it get us when we can, we can tr worry about nothing, pray about everything, be thankful and grateful and focus on the right things? It gives us this unwavering peace that no matter what we face, God is with us. Scripture talks about the garden. It says, in the peace of Christ, the peace which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ. Jesus. this word guard. This word guard is actually referred to in the Greek as a um, sentry guard. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a guard to fight off all uh, anybody that would try to uh, come and invade. It was a detachment of soldiers. And what Paul was saying here is he's saying, when you pray, and I've had to use this scripture so much in my life, when I have prayed, I've had to ask God, God, please come guard my mind because it's being filled with lots of stuff. It says it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The guard comes around and protects you 24 seven, guards you from that worry and that fear. That guard will keep you focused. What are you worried about today? What are you stressed about today? What consumes your mind? What right now are you trying to fix that's really not yours to fix, it's God's? Bow your heads with me this morning. Father, help us today. Search us right now, Holy Spirit. Would you just search us, God? Search us. Holy Spirit, right now. Reveal to us our worry. Reveal to us the areas that we are controlling that we need to give the control over to you. Head bowed, eyes closed. Just think about that. Would you just think about that right now? Some of you, even right now, you're uncomfortable just sitting there and just cl eyes closed. You're uncomfortable because you're so full of anxiousness. Just, just quiet right now.
Holy Spirit, would you just move upon your children? Some of you just, right now, the calm, there's a calm that is trying to move upon you right now. Some of you, you've been worried about something. Something's been pressing in on you for such a long time. Some of you, the season we're in as far as you, mankind, you're, you, you're anxious about it. it. You're stressed about it. it. It consumes you. Just quiet. Let the peace, the peace of God be upon you. Father, Be the guard of those hearts and minds right now. Those jobs, those finances, that health situation, that relationship that's broken down. Father, I ask that right now you would move in this place, that God, your peace would just be like a blanket falling down on every single person here and may it cover us with your incredible peace let that peace guard our hearts and our minds thank you God thank you for your peace some of you some of you are just just need to just take a breath. I feel like there's some of you here today, you've been, you've been going 90 miles an hour trying to fix, trying to bring a solution, trying to make something happen, trying to force something through. And it seems like every time you've tried to make it happen or tried to do it, it seems like it's just kind of collapsed or it's fallen apart or it just hasn't gone your way. I just want to encourage you today, if this is you, listen, God says, Relax. Ask me. I love you. I care about you. Trust me. I'll bring you through. Others of you are looking to God for an answer about something. You're looking for God, to God for an answer about something in your life. God says this. You can trust me. I will bring you the answer at the right time. It may not be the answer you want, but it'll be the answer you need. Thank you, God. Father, may you just guide our steps. Help us to, as we journey through life, as we journey through this season, as we go through the next months to come, years to come. Lord, how I ask we'd be mindful to worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Give thanks to you, God, in all seasons. And God, most importantly, be choosy about what we allow in our lives so that, God, it may be pure, lovely, admirable, and excellent and praiseworthy to you. So, God, may you watch over us. I pray a blessing upon my Crossview family those that are in person, and those that are watching online. God, I pray that you will guard them, watch over them, bless them and keep them. God, may you strengthen them all the days of their life to keep their eyes upon you, Jesus. You are the priority. This world will fail. Jesus, you never do. We sing this amazing grace. Stand your feet and let's sing it to him this morning. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Whoa, whoa, I once was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see. I can see. Oh, I can see.
rise upon him. Oh, I can see the love in your eyes. Lay yourself down. And raising up the broken to life. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for being here today. You give your offerings on the way out. We thank you so much for your support to Cross. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.